Hey, Anna. I just thought of one thing that's permanent. What's that? Love. Frozen 2 is the greatly anticipated sequel to Disney's 2013 smash hit, Frozen. Like the first movie, Frozen 2 strays away from the typical single female protagonist that Disney is known for and further depicts the beautiful dynamic between Elsa and Anna. This is a big reason why Frozen was so successful and why Frozen 2 was able to do even better. Try not to scream. <laughs> Frozen 2 now stands as the highest grossing animated movie of all time, generating over $1.3 billion at the global box office. Frozen 2 is rated PG by the MPAA for action, peril, and some thematic elements. This means that it is a great movie for everyone, especially the kids. However, quite a few scenes and themes have us thinking otherwise. Be sure to stick around till the end as we run down the list of scenes that must not have been made for kids. Let's get started. Kristoff! I'm here. What do you need? To get to the dam. You got it. All-inclusive Arendelle. Well, you chose a nice cold greeting. They've been trapped in here this whole time? Yeah. What do we do now? If anything, Frozen 2 only doubled down on the elements of its predecessor that caught the eye of adults. One of such details is the lack of diversity in the fictional kingdom of Arendelle. We remember the fair amount of criticism and backlash that Disney received when a lot of older viewers pointed out that both the main and background cast were all white. And not from the cold. Something is familiar. This is very problematic because not only does on-screen representation allow minorities to feel included in scene, but it also paints a bigger picture that forces us to see outside our bubble. And no, this isn't an overreach. This is something that the entire entertainment industry needs to work on. Where are Kristoff and Sven? Oh yeah, I think they took off with that rider guy and a bunch of reindeer. They left? Mm -hmm. Even for an animated movie, it's important that the characters are diverse so that certain stereotypes can be broken. While these criticisms didn't put a dent in the overall success of the first movie, it appears that it caught the attention of its producers. In the introductory scene of Frozen 2, adults can see that Arendelle is more inclusive than before. There is Lieutenant Matthias, who is a predominantly black character, and later on, we meet the people of Northaldra. These characters are based on the real-life Sami people of Scandinavia. Disney admits to working with the Sami people just so they could perfectly bring these characters to life. We know that the kids will not notice and would certainly certainly not care about all the efforts that went into making the Frozen movies more diverse, but it is a step in the right direction. They're all looking at us, aren't they? Got any advice? The animal proposal scene. My feisty, fearless, ginger sweet love. Will you marry me? Somewhere at the beginning of this movie, Kristoff sings a heartwarming and catchy song about his intention of asking Anna to marry him. In his excitement, he sings to the wrong lady in the middle of the forest, but what catches our attention is how he goes down on one knee in front of Sven. Sure, this is practice for the actual proposal, but it didn't have to be in front of the reindeer, especially after the locals react in disgust to this mistaken situation. One of the ladies is so horrified that she immediately covers her child's eyes. Who knows, people marrying their animals could be an actual problem in Arendelle. Anyways, we don't think you would want the kids caught wind. Oh, of what these ladies would be so worried about. You do the best voices! Like when you pretend to be Kristoff and you're like, I just need to go talk to some rocks about my childhood and stuff. The alone time scene. I can't seem to get her attention, or even say the right thing. Well, you're in luck. I know nothing about women. Elsa is a sister with cool powers, so it makes sense that her character does not have any time to spare for romance. Anna, on the other hand, is quite the loved up character. She spent most of the first movie pining after Hans, only to end up falling for Kristoff in the end. In her defense, we don't think anybody should be with a guy like Hans, Anyways, in this second movie, we see Anna and Kristoff kiss a couple of times, but there is a scene in particular that suggests that Anna has some naughty thoughts in mind. This scene comes up in the sequence where Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, and Olaf are heading out for their adventure. Keep coming! Keep coming! <laughs> With Sven pulling the wagon, Kristoff and Anna are riding in the front while Elsa and Olaf are in the back. There is a moment when Elsa and Olaf doze off at the back and this is Anna's cue to suggest something naughty to Kristoff. Asking Kristoff what he wants to do just before she puckers up her lips, girl, you ain't that sleek. We just hope the kids think she only wants a harmless kiss as opposed to some other adult activity that requires some privacy and an added thrill of almost getting caught. That's very clever. Although it does make me wonder why they don't just make the whole ship waterproof. The black box scene. Yelena asked why would the spirits reward Arendelle with a magical queen? Remember when Olaf asked if a compartment of the ship was waterproof? Why wasn't the whole ship designed to be waterproof as well? Of course you do. Who can forget? 
While this scene might get a laugh from the kids, we can assure you that it is not a joke that was made for them. Even some adults would laugh at that scene without realizing that the line is actually a reference to a very old aviation joke about black boxes. The original joke goes, if the black box is crash proof, then why don't they make the whole plane out of the black box? For those who do not know, black boxes are flight recorders designed to survive a plane crash. They are meant to help investigators determine what caused the crash and how a further occurrence can be prevented. We know, it's even funnier now that you have context. Imagine how the kids would feel. Unredeemable monster! Greatest mistake of your life! We didn't even kiss you! Scenes of Olaf and his existential concerns. This might sound crazy, but I'm sensing some rising anger. Uh, well, I am angry, Olaf. Remember that saying, the one that goes, as I grow older and wiser? I have begun to understand how little I understand. Well, every time Olaf begins to go on and on, we can't help but think just how true those words are. In Frozen 2, it's not hard to miss that Olaf has grown even more deeper with time. The older he gets, the farther his thoughts get from being relatable to kids. Olaf thinks things like, who knows if the ways of men. We are certain that his character is a philosophical gem that was not created for the kids. While I still don't know what transformation means, I feel like this forest has really changed us all. Or the time he says, I wish it could last forever, and yet change mocks up with her beauty. As adults, we will not only realize that this will eventually turn out to be a big theme in the movie, but it will also remind us that there is beauty in adapting and growing. While the kids would totally be lost to some of the things he says, we know that parents and other adult viewers would pause and take some time to ponder about things and even evaluate their lives. Of a king. That is not what magic does. That's just your fear. Fear is what can't be trusted. The true origin scene. Is it really you? Anna. <laughs> Elsa eventually discovers why Arendelle and the Northaldra had gone to war in the past, and it is quite a story that seems all too familiar. When their grandfather was king, he did a lot of questionable and evil things. First, his attempt to colonize the Northaldra, constructing the dam that almost destroys their land and then killing their leader when he tries to get answers. This ignites a war between the two people and is very unnecessary. The scene where all of this is revealed exposes a lot of societal ills that children cannot even begin to understand, let alone grasp its magnitude. There's colonialism, environmental recklessness, and even religious bigotry. Tree. The dam getting destroyed at the end also kind of symbolizes the end of all the oppression and a return to a better order. Quite a heavy theme to be hidden away in a kids movie if you ask us. That's why everyone was forced out. To protect them from what has to be done. The Olaf flurrying away scene. Have you and Elsa and Kristoff and Sven and the gates are open wide and I'm not alone anymore. Of course, this scene had to make this list. Olaf single-handedly carries this movie in terms of embodying all the comic relief and cuteness. So to watch him gradually melt away as Elsa's powers disappear was heartbreaking. The trauma from this scene is so real that we cannot get over it. It feels like your heart is being stepped on and your Aries are struggling to hold back the tears. Kids would get emotional about the scene, but it's not because they understand that it's a euphemism for death. It's Olaf, and something bad is happening to him. Anna is holding him and crying, oh, she'll miss him. These are the only things that kids will get out of the scene. Although Elsa brings back Olaf in the end as adults, we are reminded that death is just as inevitable as it is final. Olaf, um, maybe just one of you should do it. I agree. She's a little pitchy. So what do you think about these scenes? Did they seem appropriate for kids when you first watched them? Let us know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, go on to the next one, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to never miss a new video from us. Uh, you coming with? I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll meet you there. Okay. Uh, you know where you're going. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yep. I know the woods.